1969, the U.S. Navy established the Fighter Weapons School, known as Top Gun. At this elite facility, fighter pilots mastered high-speed air combat on multi-million dollar jets that could pull high-G turns that left untrained pilots blacking out in seconds. In August 2025, at Camp Atterbury in South Central Indiana, the Pentagon opened a similar school for a different kind of pilot. The Defense Department's Technology Readiness Experimentation Program, or T-Rex, prepares pilots for a new kind of war, and they call the program Top Drone. Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, with no established doctrine, no training infrastructure built over decades, reconnaissance quadcopters, loitering munitions, Turkish Bayraktars, and racing drones all found their way to the front lines, leaving Ukrainian operators to learn what worked through trial and error while Russian forces advanced. Among all these platforms, one type emerged as particularly effective, first-person view drones, controlled via virtual reality headsets that feed the operator live video from front-mounted cameras. FPVs create the sensation of flying inside the aircraft while the pilot remains safe behind the lines. These models, once designed for hobbyist racing circuits and other civilian uses, have now been turned into disposable precision-guided munitions used by both sides. They require exceptional hand-eye coordination to pilot effectively and can be finicky, but in the hands of trained operators, they have proven devastatingly accurate on the battlefield. By the end of 2023, FPV drones had evolved into organized attack squadrons, striking armor, artillery, and trenches at a pace traditional air power couldn't match. Ukraine's Defense Ministry expanded production and training for these kamikaze drones, which analysts at the Royal United Services Institute in London estimated were responsible for roughly 70% of Russian equipment losses on some fronts. As Ukraine's battlefield became a classroom for the rest of the Western world, Washington found itself struggling to catch up. The Pentagon had been talking about rapidly scaling up drone forces for years, and early efforts to do so had stalled. But there had not been a clear sense of how the United States would conduct sustained drone warfare or how closely it would resemble what's happening today in Ukraine. Until now. In 2025, a combination of recent developments, tech breakthroughs, and policy changes suggests this is all about to change. In the summer, Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth announced policy changes, allowing military units and combatant commands to purchase drones directly, bypassing the slower of formal acquisition channels. Speaking to reporters, he said, quote, when it comes to drones, large, small, all classes, we need to be world-class, and we will. The bet the Pentagon is making is simple. Ukraine proved FPV drones work. Now America will prove it can work at scale, with infrastructure, funding, and industrial backing. Emil Michael, the newly confirmed Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, has called this, quote, the beginning of American drone dominance. And it all begins by going back to school. To achieve drone dominance in both civil and military aviation, the Pentagon is taking a Biden-era experimentation program and accelerating it. Held since 2023, the semi-annual Technology Readiness Experimentation, or T-REX, is the Defense Department's evaluation program designed to validate prototypes and address urgent capability gaps across the services and combatant commands. The training event has functioned as a proving ground for drone prototypes and other emerging weapon systems relevant across the military services. Now, the August 2025 iteration featured Top Gun-style air combat training for this unlikely yet growing industry, with a training run reminiscent of the famous Navy training program for promising fighter pilots with a 2020s twist. For the inaugural four-day competition, organizers constructed a training course at the Muscatatuck Training Center just south of Camp Atterbury in south-central Indiana. Two commercial contractors flew their systems alongside the Army's Combat Lethality Task Force and Aviation Center of Excellence. The drones themselves were a mix. Some wireless first-person view platforms, others fiber-optic tethered systems, each with different trade-offs between range, control latency, and resistance to jamming. These trials were designed to measure what individual operators could do under pressure, replicating urban terrain and emphasizing maneuverability, endurance, and reconnaissance capabilities. The next stage, held on the adjoining Camp Atterbury range, was a test in which the Marine Corps attack drone team conducted live fire demonstrations testing how those drones behaved as part of a network battle space watched by Pentagon observers. Under a muggy Indiana sky, Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering Emil Michael stood alongside military officers and a small group of reporters as a pickup truck hauled a refrigerator-sized container 
near the center of a test field. The box opened, and six drones lifted off one by one, forming up and then repositioning to converge on their objective, an armored vehicle roughly a thousand feet away. Though the strike itself carried little of the spectacle typical of defense demonstrations, what mattered most was the intricate network of sensing, communication, and autonomy systems operating in real time, coordinating targets and movement without human input at every step. This was only the beginning of the T-Rex 2025 event. Over the next two weeks, the department evaluated 58 technologies. Some arrived with military service or combatant command sponsorship, validated by months of internal testing. Others came from companies that had never worked with the Pentagon before, but believed their systems could fill gaps the Defense Department hadn't yet solved. A portion of these systems will advance directly into joint rapid experimentation programs, while others will require additional development cycles, testing, and refinement before they're ready for operational evaluation. Lieutenant Colonel Matt Limeberry, commander of the Pentagon's Rapid Assessment and Prototype Technology Task Force, told reporters that, quote, The goal of T-Rex is to come out and you find your best transition partner, an innovation pathway that fits the need of your company or fits the need of the government, depending on where the gap and critical need is. Beyond the live demonstrations, T-Rex hosted static displays from 50 additional companies whose systems remain in early development. Their prototypes weren't mature enough for field testing, but showed enough promise to warrant observation. Some may appear at future T-Rex evaluations once they've cleared technical milestones. As the two-week event concluded, Limeberry told reporters the operators navigating the inaugural top drone course exceeded his expectations. The Defense Department now plans to host at least two such schools annually, building a training pipeline that didn't exist a year ago. The objective is to provide service members, industry partners, and academic researchers with a proving ground that replicates actual combat conditions, complete with the terrain constraints and electronic warfare effects operators encounter in the field. Future T-Rex iterations will expand beyond the four-day format into multi-week rotations, giving operators time to refine tactics against progressively more complex obstacles and countermeasures. The department is also constructing a secondary top drone facility at Camp Atterbury, designed for dense, worded terrain, where GPS signals will degrade under the canopy, forcing operators to rely on visual navigation. According to Limeberry, quote, as we continue to scale the complexity, it will be an a la carte menu of electronic warfare jamming and providing a real-world, adversarial, threat-informed environment that we need to fly with and through to make sure that we're staying competitive. The intent is for the military services not only to field more drones for operators, but also to develop the organizational and training infrastructure to support broader adoption by 2027. According to Emil Michael, quote, the percentage of components that are made in America will only increase. At this point, dominance is more aspiration than reality. Russia has delivered more than a million small drones to its forces, but Ukraine's rapid production lines now match or exceed that pace, turning out roughly 200,000 units a month. A larger problem is China, which dominates the market not only for small consumer drones, but also for the essential digital and electric components that go into them. The challenges run deeper than supply chains. Russian and Chinese forces train drone operators in settings where jamming measures are active replicating the electronic warfare conditions operators face in combat. The U.S. cannot easily replicate those environments. FAA and FCC rules sharply limit electronic warfare and jamming inside national airspace, confining realistic trials to a handful of government ranges. Pentagon officials say they're working with regulators to expand that access, but the process will take time. Despite the hurdles, American officials have placed drone dominance as a priority, with the Pentagon moving to reduce bureaucratic barriers and speed up mass production. As Secretary of Defense Pete Hegseth said, quote, We will speed up the timeline of rapid innovation. We have to, on behalf of our warfighters, on behalf of the threats that we face around the globe, on behalf of the changing face of warfare. <laughs>